Good morning, everyone. Well, as we go into our reading for this week, we're met uh, with Jesus having an, a parable. We know he likes to tell stories in parables and to teach people lessons through parables. And this chapter in Matthew actually has a whole bunch of them. And so this week, uh, it's focused in on the parable of the sower and the seeds. And so I want to start with this basic premise because I think sometimes there's a misconception about this parable. And, you know, it talks about these like different types of soils. There's like the path and the rocky soil and the thorny soil and then good soil. And I think sometimes it, it gets conflated that, you know, when you're a Christian and you are following the words of Jesus um, as the best you can and, and when you're doing that, that you have the good soil. Of course you're the good soil because the word has been laid in you and, and so you are the good soil. And others, if they strayed from the word or some other thing like that, that they're the other types of soils. But what I want to talk about is that we all, each of us, have all of these soils within us. And I think our, our emotions manifest depending on the topic and, and what we're talking about and what message uh, we're, we're receiving. And then that seed, that message, is, is it lands on all of these different types of soils within us. So within us, we all have that path. We all have rocky soil. We all have thorny soil. And we all have good soil. And so if we know that inside of us, we have all of these different types of soils, well, what is, what is this seed that we're planting? Well, in the passage, Jesus describes the seed as the word of the kingdom. So I like to think of this uh, as a passage later in Matthew, when Jesus talks about, um, you know, clothing the naked and feeding the hungry and welcoming the stranger, sheltering the homeless, freeing the prisoner, caring for the sick. I see these as ways that we hear the word of the kingdom here on earth. Because in the kingdom, those are not worries anymore. And so when we talk about this word of the kingdom, I, I think about all of these different things that Jesus points out it, later in a passage in Matthew. And at the heart of all of these is love. And at the heart of that love is justice for all people, for all of God's children. And so, kind of diving into that, I want to look at each of these soils quick and, and talk about how each of these soils, when we have a word from the kingdom laid upon them, where, how that seed reacts depending on what type of soil it's laid in inside our hearts. And so, first we start out with the path. And, and Jesus describes the path because, you know, this reading is actually broken up into like a first section and it's where the parable is and then there's kind of like this middle section and then it, it jumps to the second section where Jesus explains the parable um, which is helpful and also not helpful nearly enough because it's still confusing because parables often are confusing and so Jesus describes the path when when a seed falls on the path and says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart, and this is what was sown on the path. And so Jesus is here is talking about not understanding. And so when a word or a message is laid on our hearts and we don't understand it, there's often this defense mechanism to, to just kind of push it away and, and not really pay attention rather than taking time to learn and to listen. Because if, if you don't understand it, sometimes that means we have to admit that we're wrong or that we don't know something. And that can be really hard. And much like a seed trying to be planted on a path, that path is like, I'm not soil. This... I, Come, come snatch it away. I don't understand why you put a seed here because it's not going to grow. And so when we get these messages from the kingdom of love and of justice, when we don't understand them, for one reason or another, there could be many reasons we don't understand it, but when we don't understand them, they get pushed away. And, and so 
then that message doesn't have time to take root because they were pushed away too quickly. So then we have the rocky soil. And it says, as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on the account of the world, that person immediately falls away. This one I find to be so relevant right now. And, and first I want to kind of talk about this word joy. Because when I think of joy, and this is important, I think, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Our society often conflates the two, so if you're joyful, that immediately goes to this, this happy place. For me, I see happiness much more as an emotion, whereas joy is this constant stream within me. And I see it much more as a passion than necessarily happiness. And so, this idea of receiving this seed with passion, with that type of joy. I think this is so relevant when we think about our current events with the COVID response and with the Black Lives Matter movement and with calling out police brutality. Because a lot of the, a lot with the Black Lives Matter movement and with calling out police brutality, this is the type of soil I think this message often falls on when another video or another news story comes out and then there's a lot of protests and there's a lot of pushback but then eventually it dies down because the root isn't deep enough and right now I think we're in that spot where this could easily turn into this place of rocky soil or it could take root and keep going I think it falls into this um, issue of the COVID response as well you know, at first, many places were really like, okay, we're going to lock down and, 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 you know, stop everything. And I think it's, if we keep opening and opening, well, I mean, that's not taking root. That's not, you know, stopping where you are. And it's, it's letting, um, it's, it's starting something with that passion and that joy. And then when it gets too hard, giving up. And so then, you know, when we think about that, we have to think about planting things long term. Because any sort of garden, if you ever grow anything, you know, it's not a one time thing. It's something that you grow and you nurture and you water over time. And, and as it grows and as it, you know, gets get bigger and, and more fruitful, that's how it can take root. And so if we just let it, you know, uh, give us a jolt of energy now and then, it doesn't ever take that root. So then we come to the, to the third type of soil, the thorny soil. And this one, I think, is really hard to recognize within ourselves. Because I think this one, um, what Jesus says is, As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. So, you know, it's this focus on ideals that are of the earth and not of the kingdom of heaven that this word is coming from. Jesus specifically gives the example of wealth, but I think that this I, this dichotomy can go beyond only socioeconomic status. This privilege of having money or of being white or of being a male or being straight or able-bodied, all of these then can make it really easy to shut out experiences outside of ourselves and say, you know, I, I think I'm good. You know, I've, I've heard the word and, and I think I'm good on my own patch of soil. But the thing is that that privilege of wealth or of race or of sexual orientation, all of that can then make us not able to have the word flourish. 
because it gets choked out by the things that hold us back from encouraging love and justice for all of God's children. And I think this one is really hard to acknowledge within ourselves because it can be hard to acknowledge that a lot of times we are part of the problem. And so then we come to the good soil. And this soil is the soil you want to fertilize, right? It's the soil you want to water and take care of and nurture. This is the soil that yields fruit. Jesus says, as far as what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears the fruit and yields it. In one case, a hundredfold, in another case, 60, and in another 30. And so what fruit is this bearing? What, what is it yielding, this fruit of this seed of love and justice? Well, it's bearing justice. It's bearing justice for the naked and the hungry, for the impoverished, the homeless, the captive, for our neighbors that are black or indigenous or differently abled, for those who speak a language other than English or didn't or were not born in this country. And the list can go on and on. Because when that fruit is yielded from that seed in good soil, that seed has places to grow. And if that seed at the heart of it is if there is love and if there is justice, then the fruit that it yields is love and justice too. And that love and that justice has to go outside of only our own soil into the soil of all people. And so when that seed is planted and when it lands on good soil, we are then called to action, to stand up for our neighbor, to stand with and for each other against all forms of oppression, against all forms of injustice, against all forms of things that are counter to what the word of the kingdom tells us to be true. And that is the inherent image of God in every child of God. I'd like to end this week with, uh, with a prayer. And this prayer comes from a song that we often sing at the camp that I used to work at. And uh, it's based upon this passage. And so I offer up this prayer for me, for you, for all of us as we go forward. And we remember that all of these types of soil are within us. And we can pay more attention to which type of soil we are letting the messages and the word of the kingdom be planted in. And what sometimes when we have to uproot where that seed was planted and move it instead to the good soil. And so let us pray. God, when my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, Lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let our hearts, Lord, let our hearts be good soil. Amen.